scheduled for November so that everybody really can learn something which is which they can apply in their daily work, which would ultimately generate business results. And on the other hand, we can also meet, exchange, and share ideas with each other. So, so today, my name is Rita Choi. We are holding this information session so that we know more about this bootcamp. And earlier, we have sent out a flyer on this information session. Basically, it's scheduled for the 14th of September, September for 14th of September today. And uh, for this bootcamp itself, basically, it will serve a lot of purposes. And the bootcamp is scheduled for the 21st and 20 to 23rd of November this year in Bali. So without further ado, I would like to pass the control to the facilitator, who is also a very experienced and professional coach, trainer, and speaker who drive a lot of business results for the client, Caleb Ng, who is from Singapore. He's going to tell us more about this bootcamp, what we are going to get from it, and also more details about it. Okay, so without further ado, Caleb, I would like to pass the control to you. Thank you, Rita. Hi, good morning, everyone. It's such a great honor to be able to meet all of you. Uh, I, I serve as a uh, business uh, culture coach, as well as consultant for many organizations. And uh, one of the things I encounter on a day-to-day -day basis is that I realize that in many companies, there are many uh, uh, you know, they have great strategies, they have great plans. But a lot of times the strategies and the plan and what they want to do cannot be achieved because there's something that blocked their way. So I want to share with you uh, today uh, on this subject called the key drivers on business results. And this will really help us to understand how do you move the organization forward? How do you achieve better results? Uh, and we all know that um, results are always as a result of uh, good people performance. But how do you get there? Uh, yesterday, I was reading a newspaper uh, article uh, published in the uh, Today Online in Singapore. Uh, the news reported that nine out of ten companies, uh, the employers are finding difficulties in training their staff to be able to adopt the new technologies and so uh, this is uh, this is very alarming and it's happening in a uh, country that is fast advancing fast moving and yet nine out of ten employers are experiencing big struggles to get the companies as a whole to adopt and to implement new technologies so we want to understand today uh, key drivers on business results. Uh, I understand that most companies uh, would identify some key pillars, or we call that drivers. Let me explain what drivers are. A new, a key business driver is something that has a major impact on the performance of your business. Yeah. So uh, as I was preparing this, uh, there is this uh, research that I have pulled out later on. I'm going to show it to all of you. So uh, there's this university. In fact, it combines with another uh, top-notch university in US. And together, they make a study with 1,900 CEOs uh, of uh, companies worldwide. 1,900 CEOs, and uh, they are all uh, fast-moving, fast-growing companies, uh, and uh, so they they actually went there to do some research and uh, ask them uh, very key questions. And so one of the, one of the questions that they uh, asked them would be, what are the key uh, drivers of your company that will yield business results? And so they give them a whole list of drivers. And here are the, uh, 
the some of the key drivers that are identified as uh, very important to drive business results. So uh, before that, uh, let's understand that key drivers are actually enablers. They enable an organization to increase revenue growth. They build uh, customer loyalty. They retain uh, quality employees. And lastly, they improve profitability. So here are the list of the uh, enablers or key drivers that uh, most CEOs have identified to be very critical and important. So one would be finance function, production process, marketing, uh, the CEO himself or herself, uh, plan, operating plan and system, strategic plan, and then uh, number seven is corporate culture. So these are ranked as the top seven key drivers that will really uh, affect and impact the business results. So out of the seven, uh, again, uh, 56 MBA students actually get the, all the CEOs to rank which one out of the seven key drivers, which one is the key most important uh, driver that will really impact the most. So let's look at uh, which driver, value driver has the greatest impact on business results. So uh, finance function, production process, marketing, CEO, operating plan and system, strategic plan, and corporate culture. So here is the data that was collected. So this data is actually based, based in the US, okay? Uh, they, they actually survey from the top 20 companies and they ask them this question. So uh, this result is taken from US. Then they actually uh, surveyed across the globe in different parts of the world. And here is what uh, it shows firms with culture as a value driver. And you, as you can see, uh, just a minute, US uh, rank it as quite high, almost like more than, uh, almost hitting 50%. Europe above 38%, it's almost about 42. And then Asia, 38, Latin America, uh, below 25, and then Africa is touching almost about 38%. Uh, so with this, uh, it is very important to us to begin to understand this. Your corporate culture allows you to execute as you would desire to be. Therefore, your corporate culture determines the true potential of your organization. So in my day-to-day -day work, uh, I experience uh, talking to many CEOs and uh, COOs and those who are key decision makers. They want to move their organizations uh, forward. They want to see that the company becomes more profitable and able to uh, move with the trend and adopt new technologies and things like that. But when they implement uh, this kind of forward moving strategies, sometimes uh, the culture is the one that pull them back. Either the, the people are resisting it, people are not wanting to flow with it, people are not agile, uh, as agile as you want them to be. And therefore uh, it calls the strategy to fall flat or not able to move as you should as it should be. So your corporate culture actually allows you to execute as you would desire to be. Of course, every company would want uh, the culture to be high performing, to be uh, to be able to uh, to be innovative, to be fast moving, to be able to be adaptable. Uh, and to be able to adapt to change. But how do you make that happen? Uh, it is your corporate culture and corporate culture does not happen over time. You got to be very intentional in building it. 
So I just want to quickly highlight two uh, organizations which I think most of you would know. Google and Netflix, they openly declare. You can find in the website, you can find in anywhere that Google and Netflix openly declare that the success of their organization highly contributes to the culture. It is the culture that has helped them to win, to be uh, able to stay fast, to be able to stay ahead of other organizations. So very important thing is your organizational culture is the number one corporate asset to see long-term business results. And this is the thing that many uh, companies uh, may not pay attention to it, although uh, it is ranked as one of the very top uh, uh, corporate asset in, uh, in those uh, organizations that are fast growing, but yet many do not recognize it as a very important long-term business result and their number one corporate uh, asset. So cultivating a thriving workplace culture is critically important. And here are uh, five uh, benefits. Number one is attracting top talent. Number two is bring out the best in your employees, increase employee retention, increase employee engagement and productivity, and then increase high teamwork and ownership. And this is a, this, these are the top five uh, benefits. And of course, there are many benefits as well, if you are able to understand that. And, and today, uh, some of you who are business partners, uh, HR business partners, you are not just you know, working on the day-to-day -day, uh, HR operations. You want to move your HR uh, into a higher strategic level. And this is a thing that you need to really uh, uh, want to look at. And of course, the bootcamp is actually uh, addressing this very key issue. So what we are looking at, for the differentiation strategies for exceptional performance, culture, people, results. Uh, we are looking at three things. Day one, we are really going to help you to, uh, to do a culture identification. Uh, and that's where we will also bring you to a point where we are going to help you to assess your current culture. And then we also be helping you to design the culture that you really want. And uh, so we will take you through a process. Myself, I will take you through a process because I've been helping many companies, CEOs, uh, the HR directors to do that as they, as they partner together, the HR uh, business partner, as well as the key decision maker, especially the CEO, they should come for this uh, bootcamp because it is going to be a big game changer for the company. So the second one, second day, we will look into linking the desired outcome, the, the culture, with people's performance strategies. How do you build that? A lot of times, uh, what we do are uh, so scattered, uh, and the strategies is one component, the people performance uh, policies and strategy is another com uh, separate component and the culture is just running a different track and everyone is just uh, uh, going in a different track. Everything is going in a different track and you are not going to see uh, everything converging together. So here is what I'm going to do. I'm going to help you to converge everything into one direction and one alignment such that uh, there is energy in the organization and resulting in clarity and uh, drive, as well as uh, resources flowing into one big stream. And then thirdly is to harness the big rocks to drive uh, the business results. Day three. Day three will be uh, slightly uh, about half a day uh, or more. And then, uh, and then after that, you can uh, uh, take your flight back to uh, yeah, your respective uh, uh, country that you come from. So uh, this is what we are going to cover the three days.